Hello and welcome to the Admin Bar, the community and podcast connecting with the people with the products, the lessons and strategies to help push their business forward. My name is Kyle Van Dusen from Ogle Web Design just outside of Fort Worth, Texas. And with me, as always, is my good buddy and co-host, Matt Siebert from Matthew Siebert Design. How's it going today, buddy? It's going pretty well. It's uh, Monday morning and uh, I don't I don't think I've had a case of the Mondays in a really long time. Uh, what about you, Kyle? Uh, I'm doing okay. It's been a long time since we did this, so it kind of feels like trying to get back on a bike uh, mm -hmm. after a while. Like I can still feel how to do it, but it's a little bit awkward, and I might fall down. Yeah, like uh, just before we went live, I, I was I was mentioning how I kind of have those those first day jitters all over again because it's it's been a while. Yeah, I think December was the last time. So hopefully we can get back on the wagon now and keep this thing rolling. So uh, we, we've changed up the way we do this a few times today. We're just going to have one topic to discuss. Uh, we have a few little things in the news and uh, uh, in the community that I wanted to bring up too, but we'll do that towards the end of the show. So you actually uh, got the ball rolling on this episode because you had something you wanted to discuss, I guess, a situation that's happened with your client. Mm -hmm. uh, maybe that's applicable to all of us, but uh, let's just uh, dive into it and get get the chat going. Yeah, for sure. So, um, you know, I, I had a, a call, I think, last Thursday with a with a client that I don't really do too much with these uh, with this woman. But, um, you know, actually, this this was a this was a client that Kyle and I in the very beginning, uh, we, we tag teamed the website. Um, mm, I know who you're talking about now. Yep. And uh, so she she's a super nice lady. Um, she does uh, like catering and cooking, um, and her website reflects that. But she gave me a call and she uh, she confessed. I guess that's like the best word for it because like she really felt bad um, that you know what with COVID and the the way that the business landscapes changed for her. Um, she hasn't had nearly as much work, which isn't necessarily an issue for her, um, not financially at least, but it did give her time to kind of settle down and take a step back and like look at her business. Um, and when she did that, she realized that she doesn't really have fun doing it anymore. It's very samey. It's the same recipes over and over. And, you know, she, she's not able to experiment. She's not able to, to really enjoy what she's doing. And the amount of guilt that came uh, that, that came like coupled with that, um, it was palpable. Like in this conversation, you know, she was she felt so so bad, almost as if like, you know, maybe maybe she failed or this that mm -hmm. or the other thing. And I see I see this uh, the sentiment, you know, it's reflected in the admin bar every once in a while. Somebody will post something about like oh, I'm not really digging what I do or this that you know, whatever it might be. Pivoting is perfectly okay. Um, when I first started uh, Matthew Sieber Design 10 years ago, I was doing flat work, like print work, and I was doing branding. And both of those things, I don't, I do brand, uh, like flat work, print work every once in a while now, but I don't do branding. You know, like I've, I've I used to have a whole page on my website, and like branding was this big, big part of my business. Um, now it's relegated to the graphic design page and only one small section on there because I'll take it every once in a while. Um, I have a phenomenal designer that I send these things out to anymore because I personally don't want to do branding. Um, and now I focus mostly on websites and I enjoy what I do. I'm still in the same industry. I'm still helping the same clients that I was 10 years ago, just in a different way. And I think that, you know, taking a look at what you're doing and what you enjoy and what you don't enjoy and trying to shift the business in that direction is not a failure. It's just an evolution of what yeah. you are. And, and Kyle, I know that you've gone through this same, you know, evolution as well, right? Yeah. And I think you're kind of, I don't know, I kind of feel like I'll always be doing that. Now we, we work in like a, a technology space where things just change all the time. Like if, mm -hmm. if you plan on doing what you're doing this exact minute, the exact same kind of work with the exact same tools, uh, 10 years from now, then you're not going to have a business in 10 years because Those tools might not exist. Uh, yeah, in 10 years. No, none of this is going to be the same in 10 years, maybe in five years, maybe in three years, you know? Right. So we almost like just by the nature of our business have to keep evolving. So for me, I see that as a good thing because I like 
trying the new things and exploring mm -hmm. new ideas and finding other ways I can be useful and bringing those things to clients where I think they make sense. So for me, like that's kind of something I thrive in and, and part of the reason I like this industry. But yeah, yeah, I mean, when I first started, I mean, I think you probably go through a natural evolution in this business. When I first started, I was trying to do everything for everyone, oh, like yeah. whatever somebody would send me a check for, I was going to do it. Um, and then you found which jobs were miserable and then you decided, okay, well, I don't do that anymore, you know, and you kind of eventually as you get busier and more confident and are able to charge more and are able to like niche down into things, you're right. able and to build eliminate up your, your monthly recurring, like, you know, that, yeah. that also gives you a little bit more freedom. Yeah. And I think just eventually you start kind of naturally making these evolutions as it were, um, kind of as you go. Now I'm still not to the point where I've like been able to like, uh, something that I want to do, but haven't been able to do, or haven't pushed myself to do yet is to like put my flag in the ground and say, this is exactly who I am, what I do and who, who it's for, you know? So I'm still very much a generalist, uh, though I'm much less, I, I'm more narrowed down than I was when I first started, you know, but it's interesting that, you know, her space is nothing like ours. Like, I mean, you can just cater the same meals forever and what tasted good 20 years ago still tastes good today. Right. Um, so she doesn't have like that, that necessity in her industry to change. So what I, I'm kind of curious, I know it doesn't exactly have to do with web design, but now I'm just curious, like, what is she wanting to just shut the business down and go do something else? Or is there a pivot there? Like, what, what were you able to counsel her on? Well, I mean, she's she's honestly at this point really not sure. I did tell her to uh, to maybe check out Score. Um, I've done that twice. The first time was an absolute failure. I didn't like the person that they pa partnered me with. Um, but the second time around, uh, I got a wealth of knowledge and some really uh, like actionable advice to which I did, and it did help my business. So explain what Score is for the people uh, so who So Score.org is a, I think it's a nonprofit. Um, it's free for for business owners to use and they'll part you, partner you up with um, somebody that's in the same or like a very similar industry who's retired uh, and was successful in their business and they will, they'll coach you. Um, they'll, they'll basically like, I think they call it a mentor. So they'll, they'll set you up with a mentor and they'll give you advice. Um, and like I said, it's kind of like a therapist where like, you know, you got to try a couple of them before you find somebody that really vibes with you. Right. Um, and that was luckily for me, it only took two tries, but, uh, I would, I highly recommend that to, to anybody. It's an awesome free way to, uh, to have like a third, uh, like our third person's, uh, like perspective on your business. Um, so I, I, I gave her that advice and just like kind of talked her away from feeling like sad or, or like she was letting people down or letting herself down or you know, just because you don't like what you're doing anymore or like that particular part of it. She still enjoys cooking. She still enjoys all of these, sure. you know, the things that go around it, but that particular way she structured the business, she's not really feeling anymore. Um, so really there wasn't any like actionable advice from this because she just really started feeling this way. Um, so the best I could do during that conversation was just say like, look, it's fine. Like, businesses change and it, it, it's always growing. It's always evolving. It's always changing. And if you're not liking what you're doing, then yeah, like take some time, sit down, reflect, like figure out what you want to do or what would make you happy and try to go in that direction. Like see what, uh, what you can take your skills, um, that you're already implementing. You've got a business that's built up. Like how can you shift that into something that down the road you would like? And, and I think that's one of the parts about like owning your own business. You have so much freedom to do kind of whatever you want. You know, you get to make all the decisions, but as soon as like a day or a project starts feeling like a job again, it's like really the, the red flag for me. Right. Yeah. So I've had projects like that where like, damn, I feel like I'm back at a job working for somebody hating what I'm doing. So for me, that's like, okay, we have to stop right now and figure out what's going on. What caused this? How can I avoid this in the future? You know, and I think that's another part of that evolution of just kind of narrowing down exactly what path you're going to go into and what makes sense for your business. Now you did, you didn't tell me this whole story before we did this, but you did kind of give me 
a general brief of what we've been talking about. And I just happened to see this, uh, this post on Facebook uh, last night. Uh, and I think it works really well in this conversation. I was hoping I could shoehorn it in because it does have the word cat shit industry in it. <laughs> okay. So anytime I can say that on the podcast, I feel like that's a good thing. Uh, but it makes sense here. So I want to agree. This is uh, Patrick Gallagher, who's the owner of Gridpain. Uh, he posts some really insightful stuff inside of our group. He's also a great follow just on social media in general because of things like this. But he said in here, uh, Arm & Hammer, you know, the brand Arm & Hammer, um, their annual sales grew from $16 million in 1969 to nearly $320 million in less than 20 years. So 16 to $320 million. And he wrote, because they stopped selling baking soda and started selling deodorizers for refrigerators. So, you know, uh, I don't know if this is like universal around the world, but you get a thing of baking soda. They even have like the little uh, uh, perforated thing now where you just open it up and set it in your fridge because it helps like soak My up all the... has a box in it that's yeah, open. Yeah, yeah. Soaks up back. all the odors in there. So it was more of just like the pivoting the way they're marketing in it. Um, and then he said... Um, here we go. Uh, now they make more in the cat shit industry than they ever did in the baking industry. Your thing might also uh, make, or your thing might also make way more sense in a wildly different context. So maybe it's not even necessarily the work you're doing or the product you're making or the service you're providing, but like how you're positioning it and how, uh, who you're selling it to, you know? So if you're selling baking soda to put in recipes, well, you know, there's only so many recipes that are going to use baking soda. And, but when they positioned it as something else that completely changes everything, or when they put it in your, you know, your cat, uh, litter that changes things too. Uh, so maybe it's even kind of part of that too, of just, the way you look at it or the way you present it changes it pretty dramatically. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, you know, she can, she can still cook, but maybe it's, it's, it's like more privatized or maybe it's, you know, who knows, you know, and that's, that's the thing is that, you know, each individual business owner has to, to look at what they themselves find like, you know, uh, not just like fun, but also like successful. Um, but that it, it's a, it's a constant shifting. It's a, it's a constant change. Yeah. I mean, here, here's even an example right here. Like, you know, I, I really like working with small mom and pop businesses. I like working directly with like the decision makers and I like people who are kind of have the same mindset as me is like, they went out and started a business and this is what they want to do. And they're passionate about it. And I like that vibe and that energy. Uh, but what I found over time is that when you start working with somebody else, who's like me, maybe one, two, three people in the business, they're just starting out they're really, really difficult clients. They, they typically don't have budgets. They're too close to their money. So mm -hmm. in the same way I am, like when somebody asks me for my business to spend something, it's coming out of my wallet that yep. I carry in my pocket every day. So it's a lot harder to get me to part with my money than it is when you're talking about a bigger business and there's more distance between people's wallets and the company's wallet, you know? So I found over time that even though I like working with those people and I like helping those people, they're really difficult customers to have uh, because they're going to have smaller budgets and they tend to be pickier and they tend to not know what they want. They don't have any assets ready. So we're waiting on content forever. There's like a million reasons why these clients are are really hard to work with. And I think all the marketing on my website originally was really focused at those people. Again, probably because when you're starting out, those are like the low hanging fruit, mm -hmm. you know, the people you feel like you can get in and impress really easily. Uh, and then that's changed some over time. Um, but that's kind of another way you can, you can pivot your business too, is just like who you're going after. Um, so maybe back in the context of, of your customer, you know, maybe she's just catering weddings or whatever it may be. Maybe really where she could do better is when they're doing, you know, uh, events where she could, you know, design something new every time that goes for the event theme and the season and all those things where maybe she could keep it fresher or something, you know? So, you know, maybe part of that is just looking at, um, you know, who that clientele you're going after is. Yeah, absolutely. And I mean, it doesn't even, so it, it might not even be cooking. Like she owns the space that, uh, that, that her, um, her, what do you call it? Her business is run out of, I, I guess is a good way to put it. But, um, you know, so she could just open that space up to hosting meetings or hosting events and then catering here and there, depending on whether or not those people want that. Or, you know, there, there's, there's plenty of different directions. She just has to find the thing that's, you know, both fulfilling and uh, like kind of 
helps her her income as well you know there's yeah another idea might be her her business like she has a kitchen there right like a catering kitchen i'm imagining Mm -hmm. there's so many of these like ghost kitchens that opened up so like for instance if i went and looked for hot wings in granberry uh there's like this hot wing place i've never heard of uh never seen it before i know where everything is in this town it's little uh and finally i looked it up on the map because i wanted to check it out it's just our chilies like chilies franchise they just have a ghost kitchen inside chilies that's like called all about wings or something and they have a website and they have an ordering system and you can pick up orders to go or they'll uh they'll deliver them to you but it's just out of chilies right and they also they have like a i think it's a burger place or something else out of that same chilies so these ghost kitchens have become really popular because the hard part about opening up a restaurant is the facility you know so maybe there's an even opportunity there to say hey you know you can cater out of this kitchen like start your own catering business and i have the facilities here for you it's actually it's funny that you bring that up because another one of my clients sent me an email and they said hey matt uh bumped into one of your other clients today and it was actually it was this woman and uh he was talking to her about renting out her kitchen uh at this location because he (laughs) yeah uh, he's currently working with like the, uh, the community center and using their kitchen, but he's getting a little bit too big for that. And mm-hmm. uh, the amount of time at like each time he rents is is a little bit too low. So he needs to find a new place. But um, yeah, like that, that totally would work. Yeah. So I guess uh, as as we wrap up this conversation, what do you think is the big takeaway people can take from thinking about this uh, besides starting a catering business? I think that uh, you know when when you're when you're you're feeling those feelings of you know you're not as passionate about what you're doing anymore, or it's it's really becoming stressful, or it's uh, it's repetitive. Whatever the reason is, I really really want to stress: don't feel bad about it. Don't feel like you're disappointing yourself or other people or or whatnot. What you're doing already as a business owner is incredibly impressive. You know, I mean, it's something that a lot of people don't have the courage or the means or whatever it is to to get out there and try to do what they want. And who you were 10 years ago is not who you are today. And it's not going to be who you are 10 years from now. So you can't expect that you're going to be enjoying and super passionate about the same things that you were doing 10 years ago. So don't let that get to you instead pivot, like take a look, you know, try to try to think of it objectively and like really take a step back and say, okay, what are the things that I don't like doing and how can I make this into something that I do like doing? And even if that, that, comes with a complete shift in your your business give it a shot because you don't really want to be stuck doing something you don't want to be doing because that's just working a regular job yeah and sometimes some days it feels like that so the more you can avoid that the better right well, awesome. Well, that's a that's a good thing to be thinking about. Uh, I do want to say before we get out of here, it's uh, it's been a while, like we said, since we did this. But every time we post a podcast episode, we end up getting uh, just random people um, joining our Facebook community that didn't know it existed. Maybe have been listening to the podcast for a long time and didn't realize that we had this community. So really, uh, if you're one of those people, we do have a Facebook group. I know Facebook's not everybody's thing, but uh, we have just shy of about 4,000 members in there. And that's really kind of the central hub of everything we do. So most of the things going on uh, around the admin bar are happening kind of in the Facebook group first. Um, Also inside of our, on our website, uh, posting lots of articles and stuff lately so you can go to the adminbar.com on our website you'll find links to join the group and everything so we'd love to have you inside there Uh, the other thing I've been doing I think last week I hit my 28th issue which is what like four months five months Uh, of of our weekly newsletter so every Friday I send a newsletter out called the Friday Chaser Uh, inside that email is kind of highlights from some of the biggest most thought-provoking interesting newsworthy type posts that happen inside the group Uh, So we really started that because there are so many posts in the group. A lot of people feel like they've missed out on something or if they don't come every day, then they kind of miss the conversation. Uh, So I post, you know, 
between like five and eight uh, different posts from the group uh, that really got a lot of traction during that week. So you can catch up on those. And then I post some other things we're doing, like if we've posted new videos or articles or anything like that. And then finally, some kind of like news information from uh, just around the web design community. So from other groups or from other websites or resources or tools that I found and been checking out. So I definitely want to invite you uh, to check that out. You can go to the admin bar.com forward slash Friday hyphen chaser, or just look in the menu. There's a link there where you can sign up and those emails come out uh, every Friday. So we'd love to have you on that list too. Yeah. It kind of lets the, uh, the people that don't want to do Facebook uh, still like get the best, like, yeah, you're still going to need to log in for a few seconds, but it's going to bring you directly to that post and then you can leave. You don't have to do yeah, Facebook. I actually, I had somebody email, I, we get replies to those emails that go out, which is great. So if you get the email and you want to reply and say something, it, I'll answer it. Like I'm, uh, it, you won't, you won't get a ghost town or a robot answer or something. I answer those and we get a few every week. Uh, and we had somebody within the last couple of weeks write me back and say, I've been getting these newsletters for weeks now. Uh, but I, I don't want to be on Facebook. So anytime I click the links, obviously I can't read them because they're linking them directly to these posts. So he said, I'm going to sign up for like a fake, uh, Facebook <laughs> account and ask to join. Uh, will you let me in? So I said, yeah, sure. You know, so they started a Facebook account uh, just to be able to get inside the group, which That's is pretty awesome. funny. But yeah, I can understand people's hesitancy. Some days Facebook doesn't seem worth it. Mm-hmm. All right. Well, I guess we will wrap this up for the day unless there's anything else I missed, Matt. No, I think uh, I think we got it. Awesome. All right, guys. Well, if this group or show helps you in any way, the best way to help us is to like and subscribe to our channel, share our content and use our affiliate links. It's all free. It takes little time and it greatly helps support the show. And we will catch you guys in the next one. Bye-bye.